Ooh, boy. Mm, I love that first cup of coffee in the morning. Good morning, friends. Mark Holmes here with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo, who's definitely looking a lot happier these days, as well as Joe Bear in the house. And as always, I want to thank you guys for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, this literally does not work. So let's get open for business here. And let's wake up the football guys. Wake up here this morning, guys. Wake up here where we have new hope this week. This week, you know, it's it's sad that maybe we don't have any real hope um, for making it to the playoffs. And maybe we shouldn't make it to the playoffs. I just want to finish the season off feeling good and having some hope going into next year. If we can end up beating the New York stinking Giants, one, I won't have to listen to that swamp rat, batang, 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 sewer rat, whatever you want to call him, you know, because the Giants finally got a win after four years against the Cowboys. But we'll have, you know, a hope to look forward to and say, maybe we can be like the Steelers were. Steelers lost Big Ben last year. They went through a multitude of quarterbacks, you know, and they ended up missing the playoffs. And the next year, boom, they're a lot better. And you can see that dynamic that's happened quite a few times uh, with teams. And maybe that'll be the case when we get Dak Prescott back next year. Um, the draft, well, the draft will take care of itself. You know, the good thing about us is, unlike teams like the Giants and things, or, or the Eagles at finding receivers, we've been good at finding players in the draft. We've actually done really, really good on that. So I'm not worried about the draft if we have a, a pick that's, you know, top 10 or if we have, you know, top 12. You know, I, I don't think that the difference is going to be that much with this team. I, and, and as I look through, as I look through, but before I get to that, I'll tell you what, actually, let, let me play something that I heard this morning. Um, that was actually really deep from Booger McFar McFarland. They were talking last night about players after the whole debacle with Dwayne Haskins. You know, when you look at this and say you were a first-round draft pick and you have to look into the mirror and see some of this fault lies within you. And this is a great message, not only for people, you know, that are playing football player, for football players, but for anybody that you have to understand, you only get out what you put in. But I want to play this clip here this morning. And uh, like I said, it's, it's a great message for everybody here. If I can get my mouth cursor, there we go, right there. Fortunately, I've seen this too many times. Played in the NFL almost a decade. You played a long time. We've been around it for a long time. And oftentimes, young players, especially, and, I, and I'm going to go here, especially young African-American players, because they make up 70% of this league. They come into this league and they ask themselves the wrong thing. They come into the league saying not, how can I be a better player? They don't say, how can I be a better teammate? They don't say, how can I be better, mm -hmm. a better person? How can I get my organization over the hump? Here's what they come in saying. They come in saying, how can I build my brand better? How right. can I build my social media following better? How mm -hmm. can I work out on Instagram and show everybody that I'm ready to go, but when I get to the game, I don't perform? Dwayne Haskins, unfortunately, is not the first case that I've seen like this. Yes. It, and, and it won't be the it's last. Sad. And it, it bothers me because a lot of it is the young African-American player. They come in and they don't take this as a business. It is still it's a business. game to them. They look at it as it's football. It, this ain't football, right. man. This is a billion it's, dollar business. Yes. It's billions of dollars. They pay us a lot of money to talk about the game. So imagine what they pay these guys the to play, play the game. Yes. Yeah. They play a child's game to get paid a king's ransom, and, and, and it bothers me because I saw a quarterback do it. I saw Jamarcus Russell do it. The number one pick in the draft, they gave him $40 million, and he threw mm -hmm. it down the damn drain because he didn't take it seriously. And it bothers me because there ain't a lot of jobs like this around. Mm -mm. I'm going to tell you, I, I, I've been retired a while. It's not <laughs> a lot of jobs like that around where it will pay you millions of dollars for virtually six months of performance. So my yeah. message to Dwayne Haskins, not just him, but the rest of the young players in the NFL, man, this is a game, but take it as a business. There are billions, with a B, of dollars at stake. And until you start approaching this game that way, until you start coming to work saying, you know what, what can I do to get better today? What can I do to make sure my teammates are better today? How can I put my organization first instead of my damn Instagram? Take it as a, a serious 
business, but too many times it's a game. We want to TikTok. We want to do all these different things. Man, do you understand how much money is at stake? Wow. It, tell me that's not deep. And you've seen, and, and this is where everybody keeps thinking, you know, well, you, you want to tank, 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 just tank, tank, tank. There's no guarantee in the draft. You can look at guys and say, man, that guy's going to be a baller. I, I'm going to probably, I'm going to go back through and I'm going to look at the reaction of people, uh, of the talking heads when Washington got Haskins. You know, I'm, I'm sure that they were excited about the prospect, but here we are, not even two years in, this guy just doesn't have it. And we've seen this over and over again from Vince Young, from Jamarcus Russell, Josh Rosen. These guys not are not necessarily ready for prime time. They're not ready to put in the commitment and the work. And this is the thing that I say that happens a lot of times with player. This is my own theory. A lot of times you are the guy. You've been anointed this great player from high school, going into college, you're a, you know, a top recruit. You're an instant starter. You've got tons of great players that are on your team because you're at that football factory. The competition you're playing is not as good. They don't have those players. You just look like your head and shoulders above the rest. You don't have to work that hard because your team is that good. But then you come to the NFL, which is the cream of the crop. It's the top half percent of college football players the best of the best. And now you are no longer that outstanding player. You are no longer that guy that has that team that third stringers could be starting on other organizations. Now you're on an even playing field and you don't know how to compete. You don't know how to put in the work. You never have had to and you fail. That's why you see more quarterbacks like a Russell Wilson who wasn't handed anything, they looked at it and said, mm, back up, back up. That's all he's going to be is a backup. He had to put in the work to get to where he is. That's why you see a guy like Dak Prescott that has always been overlooked. has had to work his ass off, work harder than the next guy that's been given everything. And this, my friends, in lies the quadre. As much as we want to say, just draft, 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 it's a 50-50 crapshoot. You have as much chance of getting a great player as you do a bust. And if you're only relying on saying, hey, we're just going to go ahead and just lose and just say, screw all these guys and just draft it, you're not going to win. We need to develop guys and have some guys on there because you cannot pick a whole team in one draft. What you have to get is a nice rotation of players. You got some young guys mixed with some veterans. As the veterans get old, the young guys become the older guys. And then you reload with some new younger guys. And you keep on rolling and rolling and rolling. And that's what New England had done for years. Well, New England, I think there's actually a plan here. Bill Belichick recognized that this season is one of those ones that it's just not going to be good. I'm in salary cap hell. I can tell a lot of my top line players, take a year off, rest your body. We're going to reload. I can save some money for free agency. I can get high draft picks. And you watch what's going to happen with New England next year. New England is just basically taking a red shirt season. And coming back next year, watch. You watch what I tell you. New England will not everybody bitch slap all those teams next year because they have a plan so as we look at the nfc east right now we have washington on a two-game lose streak we have the eagles on a three-game lose streak we've got the giants on a two-game i'm sorry three-game losing streak and we have the cowboys that are actually on a three-game win streak um, whether we make the playoffs or not, the Cowboys right now are the hottest team in the division. And it may just be too little, too late. You know, had we won one of those games that were close or down to the wire or hadn't fake punted against Washington, maybe things would be different. Maybe we'd be looking at an 8-8 eight and eight season and feeling at least a little bit better than or 6-10, and 10, whichever it may be. 
As we go through and start thinking about next year, we have to look at our division before we look at anything else. And as I look at our divisions, when you look at the future, I got to say that right now, the one that's in the worst position has got to be the Philadelphia Eagles. The Eagles are so far above the salary cap. They're about $65 million over the projected cap with an aging roster and a quarterback controversy or a quarterback that you owe a lot of money that you got to ship out of town. Either way, you look at the position right there, the Eagles, they need the draft more than anybody else because they literally need to clean house. And it may end up being that now the Eagles start over with a new coach. I think Doug Peterson, uh, I think there's definitely a possibility that he goes. You look at the Giants. In any other year right now, you would look at the Giants and say the Giants suck. Okay? They're 5-10. and 10. It's not a great season. But because our division is so bad, the Giants feel good about themselves. Hey, we're still competing for a chance to go to playoffs. I'm not disputing that. I dare say that with the amount of injuries that they've had, losing Barkley, the fact that they've been competitive, gives you hope for the future. You look at Joe Judge and, and Jason Garrett, that maybe that, that dynamic will work, although that offense is still second worst in the NFL. But they've got a defense that's coming. I look at the Washington football team. They're getting a defense that's got a lot of learning to do. But you see that they have the studs there. You see that they've got a grit coach that's not going to take any crap, who just literally sent a message to his rookie, basically what Booger Mafaro is talking about, that if you're going to be here, you're going to be about football. We're not doing this you know, end around to the owner or anything like that. I am the head person in charge, and it's going to be my way or the highway. And he's instilling a winning I'm not going to say tradition, it's not a it's, it's, or winning mentality. And the Washington team scares me. Their problem right now is quarterback. I don't think Alex Smith is going to be the answer going forward. We'll see if Alex Smith can play this weekend. I can guarantee you that Alex Smith will be out there trying to give it a go no matter how bad the calf is. The question will be is how effective will he be? And then there's our Cowboys. The outlook for the Cowboys has to be better in my mind. Now, I know I'm a homer. I know I'm a homer. But you have to look at the Cowboys and say, okay, maybe the defense isn't quite as bad as we thought. Maybe we can focus on the draft, on getting some more players. You know, with the secondary, the guys that came back, um, Darian Thompson and, and getting uh, a Woozy back out there and uh, Diggs, that, okay, we've got some cable guys. Maybe if we can add another safety. Maybe if we can add another cornerback. Maybe another linebacker in there. You know, maybe another defensive lineman. And, and these guys, you know, take the next step next year. You say, okay, the defense isn't 32nd in the league. Maybe it's the top 15. And that may be enough to say with our offensive capabilities that if we get some more of our offensive line back, you know, we get a Zach Martin back who might play this week. We get a Zach Martin back. If we get a Tyron Smith for at least half the season, if we add another offensive tackle, if, you know, Tyler Badass takes another step and Lyle Collins comes back, you know, Zeke Elliott showed he's not quite dead yet. And Tony Pollard has given you some flashes. You look at that offense and say, with Dak behind the helm, the sky's the limit. So when you look at the hierarchy of our division for the future going forward, you got to look at it and say, Cowboys, Washington, Giants, and then Eagles. I'd like to hear your thoughts on it. Am I crazy? Am I overranking where my team is? Am I underranking the Eagles or the Giants or the Washington team? Leave a comment below and let me know what you think. But in the meantime, I got to go to my day job because, <laughs> you know, <laughs> as they always tell me, don't quit your day job because there's no future for you here on the YouTube. I'll see you guys later.